Uh, so I start from my uh, beginning, from my uh, early experience and uh, why I decided uh, uh, to go first uh, uh, or especially in, uh, in right to rachotomy. Here are my disclosures. Um, obviously we know that conventional RVR is safe, has a low stroke rate. Uh, we know the long-term durability of the valves and uh, is more cost-effective uh, in respect to uh, obviously TAVI and even higher uh, cost uh, uh, surgery. We know that sutureless valves are more expensive than uh, uh, conventional valves. Uh, we improved in the last uh, uh, years uh, uh, in the outcome of uh, this type of surgery uh, with a mortality which decreased from 3.5 uh, or 3.7 uh, to uh, something like 2.5 percent. So, and this is due to uh, uh, obviously uh, an increasing in knowledge of uh, anesthesia, of uh, 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 diagnostic preoperative quality of uh, imaging, and uh, uh, even uh, uh, intensivists are doing a great job. Uh, we know that uh, uh, there are uh, uh, many uh, techniques that have been uh, uh, proposed uh, as alternative to full sternotomy to reduce invasiveness and uh, uh, the goal of this uh, were to maintain the same quality and safety of uh, standard AVR approach. And this is surely a must that we need to uh, keep in mind all the time. Uh, there is uh, uh, sometimes a, a different vision, which means also a different definition uh, related to minimum invasiveness. Uh, but uh, 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 which is uh, uh, the real and optimal uh, minimal invasive al alternative to uh, aortic uh, valve stenosis. We surely know that the TAVI is a real minimal invasive solution. It can be done in a percutaneous way, it can be done even in a wake patient or in sedated patient. Uh, it's uh, uh, percutaneously and uh, so that's surely uh, something that we need to keep in mind. Uh, all the uh, uh, benefits of uh, uh, minimal invasive that ha has been discussed this morning that we all know we have uh, uh, seen them many times, uh, in my opinion, are uh, especially uh, important for high-risk patients. And the observation of Chris uh, in uh, evaluating a patient in uh, a, a neuroscore risk higher than six is sure, uh, surely an important uh, uh, aspect. Uh, we still have also here a lack in, uh, in evidence uh, uh, related to uh, uh, randomized control trial. Uh, the uh, randomized study proposed uh, or shown uh, by the Italian group uh, uh, is very old. Only very few patients were randomized and I honestly have some doubts about the quality of randomization. And uh, uh, we have to face with uh, uh, meta-analysis uh, or propensity uh, analysis. At uh, the time, even if we have uh, a lot of literature uh, demonstrating uh, benefits, uh, there is still criticism and we are here to uh, discuss about this. And uh, uh, when I started, I surely had two goals. Uh, one is to uh, repeat or to be uh, non-inferior. Uh, to, to, the goal was even to be superior uh, and uh, to uh, try to uh, define the, uh, uh, the weakness of the uh, previous experience. Uh, simplifying surgery uh, is uh, uh, always uh, uh, a, a way for me to, uh, to think and to try to reproduce and to uh, teach uh, uh, surgery and at the same time uh, reduce it in my time the, the costs. Uh, and even uh, here for this type of procedure was uh, a, a way to, to go, to standardize as much as possible, to collect the data, 
to have a high quality control, seeing that not only I was performing this kind of surgery, and uh, a Kuzum course was uh, uh, applied in uh, the quality performance uh, of the surgeons. Uh, two axes uh, uh, were described at the time, uh, uh, started e even with uh, aortic valve in 2003-2004, but I was more attracted by right thoracotomy because uh, it's uh, a, a procedure that uh, uh, totally uh, avoids the sewing of the sternum. Uh, I start in performing uh, CT scan first with contrast and then without because I was able to get the same uh, uh, information. I even published some algorithm to uh, predict the feasibility and the uh, easiness of uh, uh, performing this procedure. Uh, at the end, I uh, summarize that uh, it's uh, uh, much more complex as more the aorta is behind and close to the sternum. And it became uh, uh, less complex if the aorta, I don't have a pointer, is uh, more distant from the sternum and more obviously on the right. Wow. So uh, if the aorta is here behind the sternum and close the sternum is more complex, if the aorta goes more far and on the right, it's easier to uh, perform, either with conventional sutured valves nor with uh, uh, sutureless. Uh, I started in publishing the first series of uh, patients uh, performed in the first five years. Obviously, there were selected patients performed by uh, only three surgeons with uh, some uh, exclusion criteria, criteria, which was previous cardiac surgery, uh, uh, right uh, access or complex right access, and the need for an ascending uh, aorta uh, pathology uh, treatment. Then we started to uh, compare uh, mini thoracotomy with uh, uh, partial sternotomy. Uh, here the population of patient was uh, uh, 406 patients who had a minimal invasive approach and 251 who had a right thoracotomy, while the other 155 were partial sternotomy. Uh, we had benefit in terms, or we observed benefit in terms of uh, post-operative uh, AF, shorter ventilation time, and shorter ICU stay and hospital stay. So no, no difference in terms of cardiopulmonary bypass, cost clamping time, post-operative stroke and re-exploration for bleeding of blood transfusion. Uh, we were uh, um, uh, uh, applying the concept of antegrade perfusion that was uh, in uh, more than 90% of uh, our right thoracotomy uh, patients. Uh, with growing the experience, we uh, continuously in analyzing our data uh, here, uh, a propensity score match study uh, in which we compared tritoracotomy versus conventional aortic valve replacement, uh, 637 patients uh, with uh, two groups of 138 patients. And what we find out here, uh, that uh, we had a shorter mechanical ventilation time, shorter post-operative length of stay, and uh, uh, blood uh, transfusion and uh, AEF. So uh, right thoracotomy was uh, uh, superior. Uh, we did a cost analysis, uh, uh, evaluating also the, the quality. And uh, despite an incremental cost of uh, 500 euro at discharge, in which we analyzed everything, every uh, red uh, uh, blood unit transfused or each uh, anti anti antibiotic uh, which was uh, given to the patient, 
at 12 months we had a, 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 a more expensive procedure for standard AVR of uh, around 4,000 uh, euro. Obviously, the money was not the hospital money, what was a social money. Uh, the only problem with uh, uh, the uh, sutured valves was a longer cardiopulmonary bypass time and cross clamping time. Uh, and that uh, was uh, uh, the only uh, uh, point against uh, uh, right thoracotomy. Uh, since uh, uh, 2010, we started uh, to explore the field of uh, uh, sutureless valves uh, as to shorten uh, the, uh, uh, the times. Uh, last year, when I left uh, uh, my previous hospital, uh, these were the numbers uh, that I reached uh, in uh, four years. 32 enables, 390 percivals, and uh, 56 uh, uh, intuitive valves. Uh, with uh, intuitive, I get uh, uh, a good uh, confidence, especially for right thoracotomy. Why? Uh, surely the fact that the valve is collapsible, uh, in which we can reduce uh, uh, the size, uh, allows uh, a superior visibility uh, once we have to deploy the valve. The insertion through the uh, uh, route is much less traumatic. Uh, we can even perform a much smaller autotomy, which also means minimal invasive. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the technique is much more reproducible and facilitate and shorten the learning curve uh, uh, even in this kind of uh, uh, procedure. And uh, we were really able to demonstrate that uh, uh, cross clamping uh, and uh, ischemic time was, and perfusion time was uh, uh, shorter. This is a 120 kilo female, 75 years old, uh, you have seen the percutaneous uh, venous cannulation, and uh, uh, here the anti-grade aortic cannulation, which is performed obviously as high as possible, since that for the Percival we need a higher aortotomy. Uh, we cross clamp directly the aorta. We put the clamp uh, through the transverse sinus. I usually cross clamp also the pulmonary artery. The <laughs> venting of the ve ve left ventricle is very important because we need, even for a shorter period of time, to have an empty uh, field uh, from blood so that we can work without blood and uh, to have a good venting is, uh, and a good drainage obviously is uh, uh, important. Uh, the only time with sutureless uh, that we cannot uh, really uh, shorten is the time of delivering cardioplegia, is the time of uh, uh, cutting out the valve and to uh, decalcify uh, the annulus and uh, uh, now I'm really cleaning the valve as much as possible so as to uh, reobtain the best uh, elasticity of the annulus uh, uh, so that the healing of the expandable uh, uh, prosthesis uh, is uh, much higher. Uh, sizing is also very important and needs time. Uh, I think uh, uh, we have uh, uh, always a, a temptation to, uh, to use uh, larger valves uh, because that's coming from the concepts that we need uh, to keep uh, uh, the, uh, the risk of mismatch uh, as far as possible. But it's a mistake to oversize uh, uh, the valve because the valve is expandable and everything which does not expand stay in the outflow. And uh, uh, this is an older version of uh, uh, the uh, delivery uh, uh, system. 
And uh, another important part of the procedure is to well inspect the valve after deployment. You have to check for the coaptation of the leaflet, the geometry of the leaflet, how the stent is covering the native annulus, how the outflow tract looks, and least also how the stent is totally expanded. So all these uh, 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 things has to be inspected and uh, if you do everything correct you will never have a leak or a problem in valve performance. Uh, we compared sutureless versus conventional valves. This was another uh, uh, point that we uh, evaluated implanted through a right oracotomy. And uh, uh, obviously the study was retrospective and observational. Uh, in 515 patients uh, who had a right anterior thoracotomy. And we matched uh, 133 patients. Here's a type of prosthesis implanted, uh, uh, Perceval and uh, uh, Perimount Magna were the two uh, uh, high, highest numbers of uh, uh, valve implanted. And here, uh, the uh, uh, propensity matched uh, patient, and we can see that uh, uh, with uh, uh, the sutureless, uh, we had an important reduction in uh, cross clamping cardiopulmonary bypass time and postoperative ventilation time. Uh, all the other aspects were not really significant. And uh, another uh, uh, important outcome at follow-up, and I don't know why, uh, honestly, we had a, a, at uh, 40 months, uh, so more than three years, a longer su or better survival in the, uh, the sutureless group of patients. Here is the, the difference between right oracotomy and mini sternotomy. So uh, this just to confirm that uh, in right thoracotomy, the procedure can become as short as in full sternotomy when you use a, a, a sutureless valve. Uh, I told uh, before that uh, we can teach uh, and we have to teach, uh, uh, in my opinion, first with a sutureless, now then with a suturette. Uh, it's much more reproducible and within uh, five to ten cases you can really uh, leave a surgeon uh, independent in uh, using uh, this type of valves. Cousin course uh, uh, were uh, monitorized uh, uh, all the time. Here we had uh, a, 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 a change uh, uh, in our, uh, let's say, vision. Uh, related to the concept that we really decided to decalcify well the annulus and not to uh, leave some calcium as uh, uh, suggested in the early phase of the experience and after that all the problems were, uh, were solved. This is uh, one of the latest uh, uh, publication in which we uh, in uh, right thoracotomy uh, have uh, a, uh, uh, in the elderly, uh, so in the octogenarians, we have a lower postoperative stroke incidence, early extubation, and shorter hospital stay when we perform a right thoracotomy, independently from the type of the valve we have uh, implanted. This is uh, the, uh, uh, let's say, the penetration of uh, a minimal invasive uh, procedure. Uh, 2009, uh, before the using of, uh, uh, of sutureless, uh, uh, we were around 55% of minimal invasive uh, uh, procedures, uh, and it reached uh, uh, in 2013 and even 14 more than 90% of uh, uh, the uh, isolated aortic valve uh, uh, replacement. So, in my opinion, uh, since we have introduced uh, a minimal invasive and sutureless uh, when I was uh, working uh, still in my previous hospital, we were really able to go uh, to a mortality which was lower than 1%. Thank you very much.